corruption in tennis at the lowest level of the professional game has been described as a tsunami in the official report. Into the sports integrity released on Wednesday. That description comes from an investigator at the Tennis Integrity Unit, interviewed as part of the independent review of integrity of tennis. The report, which has taken more than two years to compile and is reliably said to have cost at least £15 million, summarizes a problem exacerbated by too many players not making a living as they try to break through to the highest echelon and the explosion of online betting from the mid-2000s. The current tennis environment provides a lamentably fertile breeding ground for breaches of integrity, is one conclusion contained within the document compiled by a team of lawyers led by London QC Adam Lewis, a leading specialist in sports law. However, he and his colleagues failed to find any evidence of a cover-up by the game's authorities or deliberate suppressing of cases that could damage the sport's reputation. Names are extremely thin on the ground and there is confirmation of the already established pattern that this is a problem applicable far more to futures and challenger level than the Grand Slams or the main men's and women's circuits out of Wimbledon and the immediate levels below. It states, integrity issues have not reached a significant level at Grand Slam events, ATP or WTA Tour events, WTA $125,000 events or ITF women's $60,000 and $100,000 events. There is confirmation that the issue is far more prevalent among male players than their female counterparts. There is, though, the broad observation that the current system is operated by the TU and the international governing bodies is inadequate. To deal with the nature and extent of the problem now faced. The review, the publication of which has been delayed several times, was commissioned by Tennis's Alphabet Soup of Governing Bodies in early 2016. That followed the furor caused by a BuzzFeed slash BBC report which claimed that the issue of match fixing was not being strenuously enough addressed. Many of the cases referred to dated back 10 years or more. The sports authorities have pledged to implement recommendations from today's publication, and there are 33 pages of these, going into minute detail. It should be said that much work is already being done to tackle some of the issues highlighted such as upping the strength of the tennis integrity unit to 17 employees. In fact, according to the TU's annual report of 2017, the numbers of prima facie betting alerts actually went down last year. There is a mixed report on the TU's activities, accusing it of being overly conservative in its investigations on occasions while acknowledging that progress has been made. Historically, allegations of some widespread cover-up has been dismissed, although going back to the last decade it says the ATP. Association of Tennis Professionals, on occasion failed to exhaust potential leads before ending its investigations. Perhaps the most eye catching recommendation, and one unlikely to please the players, is that there should be a limit on pure appearance fees that have no result incentive attachment to them. It is advised that appearance fees be reported to the TU and be made public. It calls for an independent supervisory board to replace the current Tennis Integrity Board made up of representatives from governing bodies, which is seen as too cozy. The TIB is criticized for not being proactive enough in its supervision. The report calls for the TU to be more internationally based, and to move away altogether from the International Tennis Federation headquarters at Roehampton where it currently resides. There is guidance, but not an insistence, that this may also embrace the whole area of anti-doping control, which some would consider at least as big a threat to the sport's integrity. Significantly in financial terms for the sport, the review wants a stop to the sale of live scoring being electronically transmitted from the lowest tier of tournaments, the current deal for which is estimated at $70 million over four years. There is a recommendation of suspected players being provisionally suspended and that the pathway towards a genuinely professional career is to be streamlined, something which is already happening. The suggestion that tournaments should cease sponsorships from betting companies looks suspiciously like window dressing. One interesting reference is to a match fixing season which is said to run from October until the end of the season at lower levels. One betting operator described TH situation as grimmer than grim. Yet for those fearing that there would some expose of big names or major skullduggery at the top of the sports hierarchy, there does not appear much of a hugely explosive nature. About this document. The panel has not discovered any evidence demonstrating a cover-up in relation to these issues by the international governing bodies, the TU or anyone else, it concludes about a sport that is now the fourth most bet upon in the world, 